Hi everyone, Bria here from Etched Actuarial and in today's video I'm going to talk about actuarial exam stress and just how to fit your exams and studying into your everyday life, like how to balance that with work and school and family and everything else you have going on in your life. I know that it can be really stressful. I've actually had some people email me and just I've seen uh, posts in the Facebook groups, the Xampian FM Facebook groups I have. Go join those if you're not in them already. But I just know that a lot of you are going through this overwhelm and stress and I wanted to try to help you out a little bit with that because I do have some good tips. So if you feel like you're kind of living in this constant state of stress because you're constantly worrying about studying or your exams and you feel like you constantly have to be studying I want you to really take this video seriously because being in that constant state of stress is really unhealthy for you. You don't want to be in that state for long. And I know as a student, I was in that state for a long time. I was lucky to not really have any long-term consequences of that, but it is possible to develop long-term results or consequences because it's just so bad for your body. Anyway. So the first tip I have for you is to set specific goals for yourself each day. And I say that because I know when you're studying, well at least when I was studying, I always felt like I had to be studying. I, Whenever I would be done studying for two hours or something each day, I'd still feel like I had to keep going. I felt like I had to be doing it whenever I had any free time. And that just gives you a lot of stress because you never feel like you're done. So what I would recommend you do, and this is what I do for members of the study strategy program, is I plan daily goals. What I recommend is that you take your entire study, study period, break it down into small chunks so that you know exactly what you need to do each day. And that will help you just eliminate that stress because you know that you're going to have enough time to get through everything. And you know that if you get a certain task done each day that you had planned in your calendar, then you're done studying and you don't have to have that constant feeling of just, you're not doing enough. You got to do more and more and more. Next tip is that I want you to try giving yourself more time. Like two or three months of studying for an exam is a pretty short amount of time. And really for a lot of you, there's no really big time pressure. Well, there is time pressure to get these exams done, but not as much as you're putting on yourself. Like an extra two months isn't going to make a long, big difference in the grand scheme of things. Like it's just two months. So if you can give yourself two months of extra time and really significantly reduce the amount of stress you have in your life, it really could be worth it. And I think it is because I know, I know you probably feel like you have to get these exams done and you maybe just feel like you want to get them done and out of the way, but taking it slower is really going to help you reduce your amount of stress and you'll just be able to do other things like exercise and do things that you enjoy at the same time as you're studying. Like I said, it's, at least I think I said it, it's really good if you can learn to fit studying into your, your life rather than having it be this two to three months where you just go full out, concentrate only on studying. Since you're going to be writing these exams for a long time, it's best if you can just kind of learn to fit them into your daily life. And that means that doing one or two hours a day is going to be more realistic than spending six hours every day and just stressing out about it all the time. Okay, the next tip that I have for you is to plan and organize your time. One of the things that I give members of the study strategy program is a 168 hour uh, schedule. So there are 168 hours in every week. And if you intentionally and purposefully plan out those hours and when you're going to study, when you're going to get done other things that you have to do, it's gonna make your life so much less stressful because you'll already have planned that in advance. And this allows you to get rid of the things that aren't high priority for you and that you just don't have time for while you're studying. I know that if you're like me, you probably really overestimate the amount that you can get done in a certain time. I'm really bad for this. Like I'm so optimistic of how much I can get done and it never gets all done. So if you plan this out, like using this 168 uh, our calendar, you're going to really like 
intentionally plan your time and you'll have a better idea of what you can actually fit in in a day. I recommend that especially for your studying and anything that's really important, you plan some extra time. So you, if you think you're going to take two hours to study, you might actually plan three hours each day to study so that you do have some extra time if you need it. Just because of that, we're often optimistic about how much we can get done. So by doing that, you will be able to figure out your priorities and actually really be serious about what you're going to be able to get done each day and you can get rid of the things that you're not going to be able to do. And the last tip I have for you is a little different than you've probably ever heard and maybe you never thought of this, but it's to declutter your life. I'm really bad for this and I tend to keep a lot of things that I don't need. I have clothes on the floor sometimes and my desk is usually a mess and it makes your head really disorganized. <laughs> and I've lately been trying to just declutter everything. It's, it's a slow process, but it just feels so much better to get rid of everything that you don't really need and you don't really like and everything like that. But for because you're getting rid of all that, it really saves up space in your head because you no longer have to think about it. And I don't know about you, but when I go into a room that's just a huge mess, it just kind of stresses me out a little bit. And I found if, if I can declutter a room and just clean it up and make it really organized, it's so much easier to focus and concentrate on studying. And it just makes everything feel so much easier. Like when you walk into a room that's a mess, it just feels like this big weight on my shoulders of things that I need to do but just don't have the time for, well, take some time to just do that quickly. It usually doesn't take as long as we think it's going to, maybe an hour or something, but it will be worth it because even if you don't do the whole house, just do the one room, but it will be worth it for the more focused studying that you can get. Oh, and I just thought of one more thing before I end this video. One other thing that I suggest you do is to intentionally plan fun things to do every one to two weeks. That will give you something to look forward to. Like if you plan uh, an outing with your family or I don't know, something fun to do with friends, if you have that planned for every one or two weeks, you're going to have that in your mind, something to look forward to, and it'll really help make studying not as dreadful as it might feel sometimes. So that's just another little tip I wanted to throw in. Anyway, if you are writing exam P or FM soon, go sign up for my study strategy tips and advice emails where I send you lots of study tips, obviously, just like how to get 80% on your exams and just, I don't know, lots of other ones. I forget what they are, but you'll find out when you go. So I will leave a link to those in the description of this video. and. If you are writing exam P and FM soon, subscribe to the channel. I will see you in the next video. Bye.